If you are brand spanking new to lymphatic drainage, you gotta watch this video because I'm gonna share with you literally everything you need to know to one, make you understand what your lymphatic system is, what it does, because when you know that, it's gonna encourage you to actually support it and do some of the things that I teach like lymphatic drainage. And then we're gonna talk about what are the important things to do and how to do them. Like what is it that you gotta know? Because there's so much information out there that is completely confusing and contradicting and so I'm going to like set the record straight and tell you what you need to know when you're looking at lymphatic drainage and how to implement it. First things first, what is our lymphatic system? Well, I want you to think about it like your waste system. It's literally the waste management system of your whole body. It's like your sewage system for your house, right? The sewage system takes all the waste from your sinks and your toilet and all of that and removes it out of your house. Well, that's what your lymphatic system does. It takes all the waste products from every tissue, cell, gland, and organ in your body and it helps distribute it to the kidneys and the gut so that it can be properly removed from your body. Skin as well, right? We can sweat it out. But the big ones is kidneys and gut. So if our lymphatic system isn't functioning properly, we're not removing waste. We're literally stewing in waste products. Imagine if your sewage system didn't work. That would be gross. You would not want to live in that house. So that's the first thing you gotta know is our lymphatic system removes waste products from our body. The second thing you gotta know is all of our lymphatic fluid drains at our collarbones, not our heart. Our heart is where all the lymphatic fluid will eventually return to eventually but it all drains here above our clavicles this is where it drains so we always gotta start at our collarbones this is where the lymphatic fluid drains to okay what you gotta know the difference between the right side and the left side of your body is it drains different parts of your body I know you would think it would just split us down the middle and the right side drains the right side and the left side drains the left side. That's not how our body works. Our right clavicle is going to drain the right side of our face, our neck, the right arm, our right breast, our right rib cage that goes all the way to our spine. So that's what the right side will drain. The left side is going to drain the left side of our face and neck, our left arm, our left breast or chest, our left rib cage that goes around to the back, and then our abdomen and both legs. Yep, the left side is really the workhorse. It's draining a lot more fluid than the right side. So we gotta look and know, okay, what are they doing? Is there puffiness on one side versus the other? If there is, that can tell you that you're gonna have have congestion or more likely to have congestion in the areas that that part drains versus the other. All right, what you gotta know about lymph nodes versus lymph vessels. When I talk about the specific seven, or the total 12, I'm talking about specific lymph node clusters. There's lots of lymph nodes throughout our whole body. And some of them are very deep, meaning we're not actually gonna be able to manually massage them or affect them. We'll talk about how we affect the lymph in those areas later. And the same goes for lymphatic vessels. Some of them are gonna be very deep, but the ones that I'm talking about when we talk about the total 12, specific seven, or even manual lymphatic massage, those are very superficial. So lymph nodes, are these ultimately like little bean looking structure kind of things. And it's like your security system of your immune system because our lymphatic system is part of our immune system. And what it's doing is it's ultimately scanning the lymph that's moving through the lymph node for pathogens, invaders, things that are gonna be harmful. And if it catches something, kind of like when you're at an airport and going through security, if security catches something or it flags it in your bag, it's gonna pull pull it aside to do a further investigation to make sure that you're not trying to smuggle something on the airplane. The lymphatic system does the same thing. The lymph nodes are going to pull in others to help like lymphocytes to break down anything that could be harmful. So all of our lymphatic fluid has to go through a lymph node before it returns to the clavicles and back to the blood supply because all of our lymphatic fluid returns back to the blood supply via the subclavian veins. Our lymph vessels is what shunts all of the lymphatic fluid to the lymph nodes which will then make its way back to the collarbones. So the lymph vessels have one-way valves. What does that mean? It means there's no pump. It means that it has these little valves that prevent backflow. So as lymph fluid moves up it's going to open lymph 
fluid's going to move up and then it's going to close to prevent that fluid from falling back down. That's ultimately why we shouldn't have swollen ankles, swollen feet, things like that, because we have these one-way valves to prevent backflow. Now we can have damage and that will allow for backflow or will allow for lymphatic fluid to accumulate. And that's for another story, but ultimately we have these one-way valves. The only way that lymph fluid in the vessels moves is by us moving it, like physically contracting our muscles and moving it or manually moving it using our hand or a tool like gua sha, a dry brush, even using things like vibration plates or rebounding. And so those are the two differentiations between the lymph nodes and the lymph vessels. Now, what you gotta know when you're implementing lymphatic drainage, the three principles, pressure, direction, and order. And we're gonna talk about pressure first. Pressure is really important. You may see, especially if you're following me on like Instagram and I'm doing these short little reels, I'm showing actually like moving. Cause if I actually did what it should look like, you're not gonna think I'm even doing anything. The pressure is so super light. So go watch the video where I talk about the amount of pressure you should use because I I guarantee it's less than what you think. And the reason that is, is because people are like, there's no way that that will do anything. It absolutely will. And the reason it will is because our lymphatic vessels are very different than muscles. It doesn't need a lot of pressure, not to mention our lymph lays on top of the muscles. It's just below the surface of our skin. So it doesn't need a whole lot of pressure in order to move, in order to be influenced. Heck, our heart beating, like when we're exercising, we get our heart rate up, is gonna cause the arteries to control contract more, right? Like it's going to have a deeper, stronger contraction, which is going to help move that lymph around. So think about it that way. Whereas if your heart beating and that pulse in your arteries is enough to move the lymphatic fluid up and up, like up and to clear, you don't need a lot of pressure. So check your pressure. Pressure is so important. The next one is the order in which you do things. You gotta move your lymphatic fluid in the right order. Think of a car accident or a car jam or a traffic jam. If you're in a traffic jam and you're like the fifth car in line and it's 10 cars long, we can't move the 10th car first, right? There's nowhere for it to go. We gotta move the first car. That's why if there's a car accident, we gotta move that car off the side of the road, right? Like to the side of the road so that the second car can go, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth. We gotta do the same thing when we're doing lymphatic drainage. We gotta start always where the traffic jam is gonna be. So I always explain it like, this is the toll booth. This is where the traffic jam is gonna be. We gotta make sure this is clear. So we always start at our collarbones. And then I like to go up into my head first because it's easy, there's only a few. So I'll go up to like, the tonsillar, then the auricular, then the suboccipital. And then from there, then I will move down my body, but starting closest to the collarbones. I'm gonna go to the next car in line, which is apical. Then after apical, it's gonna be armpit. And then if I'm doing the total 12, it would then be elbow wrist. If I'm not doing the total 12, after the armpit, it would be cisterna chile, then groin, then knee. And then it would be ankle if we were doing the total 12. So you're ultimately moving the next car in line. Always starting closest to your clavicle and then moving down. The next thing is direction. And direction is really important in the sense that if you're doing lymph nodes, you want to always move your fingers in the direction of where you want the fluid to go. So in my head and neck, I want the fluid to come down. So I'm going to be pulling or moving my fingers down. Whereas in the rest of my body for lymph nodes, I'm going to be moving it up towards the termini. Now there is a caveat here. If we're doing lymph massage, so we're dealing with the vessels, we have to know where the vessels drains. It's not always up and that's the confusing part and that's what a lot of people get hung up on. Sometimes like in our abdomen we actually have to brush or move the fluid down into the groin or around from the back in order to drain. So that's why direction is really important. We got to know where the lymph fluid drains in order to support drainage. And then the bonus one that I think so many people miss is proper breathing. We have to do belly breathing. We have to do diaphragmatic 
like breathing because remember how I said some of the lymph is really deep and we can't manually influence it? Well, we can influence it by belly breathing. And belly breathing is ultimately using the diaphragm to act as a massage, act as a pump. And that's what's gonna get all of the fluid, especially from our belly button and below, to come all the way up to our thoracic duct and drain on our left side, in our left clavicle, the left termini. So if you are starting from scratch, learn order, direction, pressure, and belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. Implementing those four things is going to massively transform your lymphatic drainage efforts. Let me know below if you have any questions about that. Thanks for being here and happy draining.